Well, welcome back. It is time for the Word on Wall Street. Top investors watching your money. Joining me right now is Verdens Capital Advisor CEO Leo Kelly, also UBS Financial Advisor Brenda O'Connor and Juan uh, Juanis. Uh, Brenda, great to see you. Thanks very much. Welcome back. Thank you for having me, Maria. Kick, yeah, kicking things off with you with a look at futures this morning ahead of the May CPI number. It is out in about an hour and 15 minutes. We're expecting the month over month increase uh, to be just two tenths of a percent and the year over year increase to be 4.1 percent year over year. Of course, it is day one of the Federal Reserve's two day June meeting kicking off today where we're expecting the Federal Reserve to stay pat this meeting and perhaps raise again in July. Uh, is that in step with your expectations? And how do you want to allocate capital uh, after this week? Right. And, and look, Maria, no matter what happens with this CPI number in an hour and a half, unless it's this huge number to the upside, I think it's safe to say the Fed is going to pause tomorrow, right? That's what they've been communicating to the markets for the last few weeks. And look, this is not a pivot, right? We can't look into it too much, but it is significant. It is significant. This is the first time potentially in 15 months that the Fed is going to do something different than hike rates. And we need to acknowledge that. It is evident that there are things in the economy that are meeting their milestones that are keeping the Fed happy. Now, I want to make one point here, right? We're coming into this summer where we could see some really substantial base effects. So I wouldn't be surprised, particularly in that shelter component of CPI, which is 40 percent, we could see headline CPI by 3 percent by the end of the summer. Yeah, it's a great point. We're also getting rate decisions, by the way, from the European Central Bank on Thursday and the Bank of Japan on Friday. Uh, have we seen a significant uh, slowdown in the global economy? And what, what about those central bank decisions? Right. I think we really need to focus on the U.S. here. And in fact, you know, look at what markets have done. You have the S&P up 13 and percent. You have the Nasdaq up um, almost close to 30. Right. Um, and so there is this scenario where we can see a slowing inflation without a huge growth consequence. But to your earlier point, we're not readjusting our portfolio significantly at this point. We do need more data to support this narrative. There are still things in the system that, frankly, I'm concerned about related to tighter lending standards. I don't know exactly how that's going to work its way through GDP and corporate profits. So we're not adjusting our positioning just yet. But the soft landing scenario is really taking shape. Leo, do you agree with that? Great to see you. Welcome back to the program, Leo. Good to have you. The Wall Street Journal is reporting more Americans are quiet quitting and facing off with their bosses. They are changing their approach to work. They've got new research from Gallup finding half of workers are not engaged on the job, putting in minimal effort to try to get by. Employee engagement in the U.S. also declining for the second year in a row, Leo. We see it every month when we look at the productivity numbers. Productivity is down, Leo. How does that play into all of this? I think it plays into it in a significant manner, uh, Maria. Uh, workers have to understand that it's an incredibly tight job market at the moment. That's going to change. It's changing now. We're starting to see the labor start to slowly deteriorate. And, and employment is a lagging indicator to earnings, and we're in an earnings recession. I think there's going to be a wake-up call. You're starting to see companies call people back to work. We've been full-time back since the beginning. It's about culture. It's about collaboration. And I think there's a couple major issues with these pushbacks. Management is, is abdicating the decision-making to employees. And in the long run, that just simply doesn't work. They have to lead. They have to bring these folks back. The young workers need to be with the experienced workers to gain important wisdom so they can manage their career. And companies just aren't going to be as efficient with people sitting at home. The reality yeah. is the only, the only survey, Maria, I've ever seen that, that was positive was a survey that said workers are more productive working from home. What was the base of the survey? A survey of workers working from home. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. So, no, yeah. I, I, I do think there are some issues with productivity, and we got to get workers back in. Yeah, well, what does this mean for allocating capital right now, Leo? I mean, the Nasdaq's up 28% year to date. We just looked at tech on fire once again this morning. How do you want to position the portfolio, knowing that we are looking at a slowing economy with productivity down? Yeah, I, I think there is conclusive data. I think when you look out, 
What we have is a market that's going up without a fundamental backstop behind it. And what that means is price is higher and risk is higher. Leading economic indicators have been in recession territory for some time. PMIs nine months in a row in contraction. We just saw the service sector again drop to a 50.3. That's multiple months in a row. If that goes to negative, then this, this really starts to signal some interesting issues in the economy. Uh, we're in an earnings recession. Labor is a lagging indicator. Um, the Fed has been incredibly aggressive. Sure, they're stopping now, but they're stopping now after they've taken a hammer to the economy for months, and we still are waiting for the impact of all those interest rate increases. Banks are having some issues. Lending's going to start to tighten up. Maria, I think this is a moment where investors, at the very least, need to rebalance their portfolio. Sure, the Nasdaq's up 30 percent, but it's off 30 percent off of, a, off of a climactic bottom last year. The S&P's up handsomely, but it's seven stocks. It's three specific stocks that are 30% of that return. I think investors need to be cautious not to get caught up in recency bias. Mm -hmm. Cash is right. okay. Long term, yep. we love stocks, but you got to make sure your allocation is correct. All good advice from both of you. Thank you, Leo Kelly and Brenda O'Connor Juanas. Great to see you both. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Quick break and then an old